34 years ago, Syria and Egypt launched a surprise attack on Israel in an attempt to win back lost Arab territories taken by Israel in the Six Days War. In July last year, eight soldiers were killed and two reservists kidnapped by Hezbollah, and Israel waged a war against the terror organization. In both cases, Israel's intelligence establishment failed to identify the indicators and examine the intelligence assessments of the situation, often ignoring vital information. In the case of the Yom Kippur War, the Israeli government and military echelon were still basking in the euphoria of the Six Days War, while assessments of massive Egyptian military exercises were noted the security establishment failed to identify them as a preparation for war. Former senior intelligence officer, Brigadier General Reserves, Ephraim Lapid, agreed to discuss the issues with InfoLive TV. When we speak about uh, the Yom Kippur War, which uh, occurred uh, 34 years ago, uh, we see the map of the Mediterranean and Arab met, uh, map which doesn't include uh, Israel, like, like the Arabs uh, do. Uh, it was 1973, six years after the 67 war, uh, six years of euphoria of uh, the Israeli society and the Israeli establishment, including the military system. And uh, the feeling was that uh, at least the leader of uh, Egypt, uh, late uh, Anwar Sadat, was a weak leader. And a weak leader, uh, a, according to the um, assessment that was at that time, will not initiate any war against Israel, especially after he uh, threatened Israel in 1971, 1972, and nothing occurred. So we thought that... Uh, um, uh, a war is not uh, on the agenda of the Arabs, especially not uh, of the Egyptians at that time. Uh, in Israel, the Prime Minister was Golda Meir, Minister of Defense, very experienced uh, Minister Moshe Dayan. Once again, after being the Minister of Defense in the Six Day War, and the uh, Chief of Staff, relatively new, uh, David El Azar, Dado and the head of intelligence, uh, Major General uh, Elise Ira. At uh, 2 o'clock uh, in Yom Kippur, uh, war started in the two arenas, in uh, the Egyptian uh, front and the Syrian front. Uh, it was a very, very bitter war with more than three, uh, almost 3,000 uh, killed, killed uh, soldiers. Uh, this was a war between Israel and the uh, uh, two armies of, of uh, Egypt and Syria. This was totally different from the war in uh, a year ago with the terrorist uh, groups who were not uh, uh, commands like, like the Egyptians and the Syrians. Uh, so, the, uh, of course, the, the difference is also not only from a uh, verbal point of view, but uh, it meant that Israel could, uh, it could use all weapons uh, in ground forces, navy and, uh, and air force and uh, anti-aircraft uh, missiles uh, in order to achieve the goals of, of the war. As I said, it was a very bitter war, but it ended with a uh, relatively success of the Israeli uh, defense forces. While uh, we were 100 kilometers from uh, the capital of uh, Egypt, from Cairo, mm -hmm. and we were also in, uh, in the Golan Heights uh, near the capital of Damascus, the capital of Syria. As you said, uh, the intelligence at, the point, at that time pointed to the probability of a war breaking out as being fairly low, even though there were large uh, sort of exercises being conducted by Egypt and the Syrians. Now, if I'm not mistaken, also Jordan's King Hussein also alerted Israel to the fact that they're going to launch a war and uh, his uh, warnings weren't taken uh, seriously, also by the intelligence community. How can you explain that? It's a, a tragic situation mm -hmm. to see 
so many officers of the Israeli intelligence sitting together day after day. It was not one day of a, 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 a meeting and all the information was discussed. It was a daily discussion and uh, a daily analysis of the information, including the information that came from King Hussein. And uh, we, uh, we think that the, the only uh, definition we can say, it's a, a mental block. Mm -hmm. uh, because when we check now the information, a, a reasonable uh, person, even not experienced and not an expert, should immediately say that these indicators show that uh, a war is going to war break. War is brewing. Yeah. yeah. Since the IDF withdrawal from southern Lebanon in May 2000, Hezbollah wasted no time in preparing for its ultimate goal, war. It stockpiled weapons, built up its defenses, constructed a network of bunkers, and purchased hundreds of short and long distance missiles. Years of preparation under Israel's nose. While the Israeli intelligence establishment monitored the situation, it failed miserably in its assessment. When war broke out, troops on the ground received outdated aerial maps, and when dispatched to villages to rout out Hezbollah strongholds, the information supplied was very different to the reality on the ground. While one cannot compare the two wars, one issue is painfully evident. In both cases, the intelligence establishment failed in its assessments. The role of intelligence uh, in preparing uh, a military force uh, for war is uh, very important, and especially in Israel, while uh, war is also a current uh, effort of the Israeli military system, and uh, we pay, uh, we invest a lot of resources in the intelligence in order to be able, first of all, uh, to give the early warning for war or also for peace, and also the daily early warning for the different uh, terrorist activities that uh, are carried out uh, by uh, our neighbors. Uh, a year ago, in uh, July 2006, uh, one uh, Israeli soldier was kidnapped in Gaza Strip, and a few days after, another two uh, reserve soldiers were kidnapped uh, by Hezbollah in the uh, Lebanese uh, arena. Uh, Israel, uh, with uh, a new leadership, a new prime minister, a new minister of defense, relatively new uh, chief of staff, uh, uh, decided that uh, we cannot give up, we cannot uh, see again a situation like was uh, in September year 2000, when uh, three Israeli soldiers were kidnapped and uh, there was no military response uh, from, uh, from Israel. So uh, within 24 hours, uh, Israel initiated a war. Uh, the situation that uh, we faced after 34 days uh, of uh, bombing uh, and firing rockets by Hezbollah was totally different from the uh, preparation that uh, we thought uh, should be in, in such a case. Uh, this was a war which uh, caused uh, big uh, troubles and uh, big damage to the Israeli uh, home front. And uh, it was more a war in the home front than in the military front of South Lebanon. So this is one of the uh, big changes, uh, I relate afterwards to Yom Kippur war. Uh, the uh, role of intelligence in such a case, like the Second Lebanon uh, War, was a uh, first on the strategic level, saying what are the intentions of the leaders of Hezbollah, and second, on the tactical level, to know where are the different sites, when, where the rockets are fired from, and uh, since we speak about the uh, capability of intelligence uh, of uh, seconds, or sometimes uh, only minutes, this is a very uh, sensitive and problematic uh, situation. We uh, were prepared with the basic uh, picture of the infrastructure of, the, uh, of Hezbollah in South Lebanon. We were not able 
to give the pinpoint of the sites of uh, the rockets uh, real time. I think that to, to conclude the aspect of intelligence in the second Lebanon war, we can say that uh, the intelligence gave a, quite a good picture of the strateg strategic level of Hezbollah, knowing where are the uh, commands, where are the sites of the strategic uh, rockets, and they were bombed immediately within uh, two days. You're talking about the long range the rockets? Long range, yes. The long range rockets. We were not uh, effective enough uh, to know real time, in real time, where are the sites of the rockets that uh, uh, fired uh, many times a day toward the north of Israel while one million uh, Israeli citizens uh, were in, in shelters. In the aftermath of both wars, special commissions were set up by the government to examine the shortcomings and failures of both the government and military decision makers. We have to remember that uh, when we uh, fight against uh, regular military systems like Egypt and Syria, it meant that all is open. We could bomb, we could fire, we could uh, target it. Every, every target, every uh, mission that we thought. That was not the situation in Lebanon. In Lebanon, we were limited by our uh, decisions, uh, civil and military, political and military uh, considerations, that we don't want to destroy Lebanon. In its interim report of April 1974, the Agranit Commission, a body established after the Yom Kippur War to determine responsibility for Israel's military unpreparedness, claimed that it could not hold Moshe Dayan's military background into account and that it should judge him as a civilian defense minister. As such, the Commission concluded that Diane did not bear any personal responsibility and that his ministerial responsibility was a public and political question rather than a judicial one. Diane offered his resignation to the then Prime Minister Golda Meir, but it was not accepted. The Commission put the blame on the Israeli military and called for the dismissal of David Elazar, then the Army Chief of Staff. Prime Minister Golda Meir took full responsibility and resigned on April 11, 1974. Shortly after the Second Lebanon War, the Winograd Commission was set up to examine the decision-making that preceded the decision to go to war. In its interim reports, the Commission stated that the decision to respond with an immediate intensive military strike was not based on a detailed, comprehensive and authorized military plan based on careful study of the complex characteristics of the Lebanese arena. The Commission held to task the top idea from government echelon and stated that the primary responsibility for those serious failings rested with Prime Minister Olmert, the Minister of Defense then Amir Peretz, and the former Chief of Staff Dan Halutz. The challenge is to bring the intelligence to the troops in order to be effective. Intelligence is not a factor that should be filed in offices. We have, of course, to use it. And uh, what was in the, these two wars that uh, maybe the, the basic early warning was not proper enough, but the uh, permanent, uh, the current intelligence in the Yom Kippur War uh, was quite good and the uh, limitations of the uh, intelligence in the Second Lebanon War, as I said before, were, the limitations were that uh, we didn't uh, uh, could uh, observe any post or any site uh, where uh, rockets or, or uh, missiles were um, uh, fired because it was uh, a change of minutes uh, to uh, redeploy the, the units. So there is a big difference between the Hezbollah and the sure. military uh, uh, systems of uh, Egypt and Syria. The State of Israel has been under the threat ever since its creation. Thousands of soldiers who fought in both wars lost their lives or were wounded defending their country. 
their memories should be cherished, their stories told and never forgotten. At the same time, the people of Israel are entitled to more. One can only hope that if and when the next war breaks out, the decision makers will have learned their lessons of the past and intelligence will be able to provide an accurate picture of the situation that will enable the government and military echelon to make the right decisions and provide the vital information for troops fighting on the ground.